Okay, Jaguar enthusiasts, this is a 1994 Jaguar XJ12. So this car was only made for a very short period of time. It was uh, originally brought out in late 93. It was made through 1994. And it was replaced by a similar car in the X305 chassis, which is the uh, facelifted mod uh, model. Uh, this is a 6 liter V12. And uh, they only made those, for, like I said, for a very short period of time. Uh, this one here has about 150,000 miles on it. Uh, it looks good from 50 feet away or 25 feet away, but it's got a lot of things that need work. Generally, it's a good driving car though, except uh, the uh, suspension needs some work because the shock bushings and some other stuff are not good on it. Uh, but overall, particularly the interior, it's pretty good. Uh, it does have some rust in it, but uh, I picked this car up just a few weeks ago and I'm still evaluating it, trying to figure out what all it needs. And uh, like I said, inside it's in pretty good shape, uh, but it's got some little areas around in various places that has some rust, uh, but it presents well. So far we've replaced the header tank on this because it, uh, the coolant reservoir was leaking. Uh, I've tightened up some of the shock bushings in the front. It needs shock bushings in the rear. Uh, and it needs lower control arm bushings and the climate control and some other stuff needs work as well. So it has a bunch of little stuff that's nothing serious, uh, but it's, you know, it's just a lot of little jobs that I need to do to, to bring the car up to snuff. And as you can see, the windshield is probably going to need replaced. Uh, so generally the car is, like I said, very straight. I don't think it's ever been in an accident. Uh, and it's, like I said, it starts, runs well, and it's got a 6-liter V12 with a uh, GM 4-speed hygromatic transmission in a 4L80E. And like I said, this car was made from 1993 through 94. And in 95 through 96, they made the V12 uh, X305 chassis with the face listed uh, area in it. So let me show you the interior. Like I said, the interior is in really nice shape. It's got the Van den Pla, uh colored piping in it. So it's uh, contrasting piping. And it's the, um, the wood in it is fairly nice, except for the one over on the driver's door. And uh, we got some little, like I said, there's some little rust areas that we got to pick up uh, that we'll probably have to uh, do something with. Uh, for some reason, the floor mats were missing out of the car, so I don't know what happened to those, but uh, it has aftermarket floor mats in it. This car would have come with really nice, very luxurious, uh, sheepskin floor mats originally from the factory because this was a Van den Pla spec car when they released it. So and that's just some of the things that are missing from the car over the years. So as I said, this is a 6 liter V12. It's got a lot of power for something built in the mid 1990s. It's got about 310, 215 horsepower. Um, and generally under the hood, it's in pretty good shape. Like I said, we had to replace this uh, header tank here because it was actually cracked and leaking. Uh, and other than that, it seems to run pretty good. I've got to change the oil and the air filters and some, some things like that to get it up to snuff in the maintenance area. Uh, but these were really unique motors. Uh, the Jaguar made a V12 motor all the way from 1971 all the way up through 1996. And uh, they originally, the ones from 1971 up through 1991 or 92 were 5.3 liter V12s. And most of them were built with an automatic transmission behind them. It was only in the E-type really that they were built with a manual transmission behind them. When you put a manual transmission behind one of these engines, they really come alive. So. Uh, it's, it's a totally different driving experience with a manual transmission behind it than it is with an uh, automatic. So, and like I said, the, uh, it's got a little wear and tear on it as far as the interior, uh, but it, like I said, it's a very unique interior because of the 
contrasting piping and the doeskin uh, colored uh, leather. And so it's a very luxurious car with lots of rear seat room, as you can see, and um, full uh, complement of things like cruise control and electric windows and the things you would normally expect on a luxury car in the 1990s. And they only built these cars with these factory wheels on them in 1993. Later on in 1994, they had a different set of wheels on that I don't think looked as quite as good. These are, these are a BBS mesh style wheel, and they look really good on the car. Uh, as you can see, there are some little areas on the car where it needs some attention. Uh, so, like I said, this is a 50 foot uh, away car. It looks really nice, but up, up close and personal, uh, there's a few issues. These things had a lot of trunk space. They're made for a GT car where you could take your family on a on a weekend or a week uh, trip and it would go really nice and everything would work really well for you because there was so much luggage space. And it had a full spare tire in the back as opposed to a space saver spare with a matching wheel on it. So um, fully kitted out. This is still cold, so it's idling a little high, but once it uh, warms up, it'll idle around 600 to 650 RPM. So. Jaguar only built a small number of these V12 XJ81 cars in comparison to the six-cylinder XJ40 cars. From the figures that I found, it seems like for U.S. export for the 1994 model year, they only brought in about 1,500 of these cars total. And of those, most of them seem to be built in early 1993, either in February or March of 1993, as you can see from the body tags that I've shown here. I've also included some sales figures for prices from cars that have sold on BAT, including this absolutely gorgeous deep wine-colored uh, 1993 car that went for $9,800 in 2020. The white car that I'm working with here, as you can see from these pictures, comparing it to the uh, 60,000 mile car that sold on BAT, probably needs some rear suspension work because as you can see there's quite a difference in, in the height of the rear suspension for the uh, white V12 car that I have versus the car that sold on BAT in 2022. And you can also see it compared to my daily driver XJ40 six-cylinder car, also from 1994. It probably has some sagging suspension too, because I know it has over 200,000 miles on it. So the rear suspension on this white car, V12 car, needs some work as well.
If you have any questions about anything in the video, please leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching.